Hey everyone, Sam McGuire here from Enterprise DNA. I just want to go over some visualization ideas uh, with you today. Just, I thought it would be really great to just recap some of my best practices and they are represented pretty well in this particular showcase that is made available um, at Enterprise DNA online. So I thought, why don't we just dive into some of the, the, the main things that I think about uh, and share them with you and then hopefully that's going to give you just some starting points because I know not everyone who's running analysis is um, cre you know, always creatively inclined, right? They don't always have, you don't always have, you know, uh, a whole range of ideas around like how to build your visualizations out to look, make them look compelling. And as you know, I'm really big on that. I think that making your reports look and look amazing and um, make a consumer want to come back for more not only in the way that they're visually, you know, that they are visually appealing, but also with the in, in, insights that they showcase, you know, all of those things combined are really, really important. So what I like to do these days when I create reports, right, is I actually like to draw it up. I actually like to sort of draw it up a little bit before I, um, before I jump into um, like designing it. And one thing, uh, one, one tool that I use a little bit now is um, this Microsoft Whiteboard. So I'll, I'll just bring it up and I'll, I'll just give you a quick demo. But you'll see here that I always like to work in grids, right? And I represent that in a number of different ways. You can check out a number of the different showcases at the Enterprise DNA Showcase page. But, um, but what I like to do is I like to work in grids. And a reason why working in grids is so effective is because within Microsoft, um, with because you can actually draw these out really well, right? And utilizing this whiteboard feature, what you can do is you can draw, draw things out really quickly in a whiteboard, right? I'm gonna show you a terrible example of how, how you could do it. But what you can do is you can sort of draw out, you know, you can obviously, I used to, well, yeah, when I, when I first started doing this a lot more, I used to sort of draw these out um, on, on, a, on a pad and paper. But I honestly usually will draw out, if I'm creating a showcase, I will draw things out within a, on, on, on something. And then I will sort of say, okay, well, does that sort of look good? And then I'll go in here and I'll say, okay, well, I want to show you know, a moving average here moving average. I want to show a cumulative total here. I want to show some sort of key metrics here, right? And, um, and then if I go like that, and so I sort of just draw it out like this. And this Microsoft whiteboard is really, really good for this, obviously. It's, it's, it's sort of quick and easy. Obviously, you can make it um, make the lines a bit straighter. I haven't done too, too good a job there. Um, but, you know, in terms of, you know, how you how you can, you know, move this around, etc., and build upon it and write notes and things like that. It's 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 a really effective tool, okay. And that's how I usually do it. And then I'll fill in the blanks from there, okay. And then what I do generally is when I have those grids, I like to I like to represent the grids somehow in inside of my report, okay. And so I'm actually going to bring up some other showcases so I can sort of just um, show you some different things, different ways that I do it. But you see here, what I've done actually is I've used a text box. In this particular example so sitting in behind here this here is actually a text box right and not a text box sorry just like a shape box it's a shape so i come up here go more visuals um no what do i do i go um i go up to insert sorry and then i go shapes right i go shapes and i go rectangle and so what i do is i actually draw those grids onto my report right Alternatively, what I what I sometimes do is I do it at the end. So I create, um, I sort of draw up what I want to um, visualize. And then I create all of the visualizations which I plan to put in those slots. And then I place them around my report in those locations. And then right at the end, I come in and then I put some simple shapes and I and I um, put them to the back. And so what I do is I put them in like that. And then I come here and I send it um, all the way to the back. And then what I do for the visualizations in front is I actually make the background i turn the background completely off so the background is transparent and so this is where you can sort of play with a few colors and work out um sort of what 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 looks good and what doesn't look good um depending on the sort of like color theme that you want one of the other great things that has been improved you know immeasurably lately is the theming within the themes within power bi so you can obviously have a custom one but there's a whole range of different colors and themes now that uh, are baked into this which i really 
um, really like compared to what it used to be like uh, it used to be horrific you used to have to um, go and individually color each individual element it was, it was absolutely horrible so they've made a, some big improvements there in terms of these icons icons you might think wow that's a little bit overkill but they add just so much value to the look and feel of your report you know i've, I've used them quite a lot in this particular report and just it just brings a level of professionalism i feel to your report pages um, and you know they're they're really easy to find. You go to a website called Flaticons, and you can find uh, many different. Um, and I'm sure there's other websites too. Um, that's not the only one, but many different examples of great little charts that you could um, you can search for relevant terms or keywords um, depending on your industry or scenario you're dealing with, and you can bake them into your reports um, in in in, yeah, where, in a number of different ways, how, how, however you like. So you see here that I've used many sort of logos at the top of each um, individual. Um, uh, visualization and so I've also sort of created a grid within a grid if you think about it so I've got I've got this grid here this square here but within here I've also tried to differentiate this other visualization down here by adding a title and having a, a logo so I've got sort of a square within a square a rectangle within a rectangle and so that, that's that's sort of like my, my my key takeaway I want I want you to sort of take from this particular um, you know, from this particular technique in this particular report is really try to think in grids and then try and place relevant values into um, and, and into their um, you know specific location right and then we can obviously change around a whole range of different things you know time frames etc and one of the other things I do is I I um, I like to showcase trends really effectively so you know you can get a lot of really granular level of detail but what I like to do here is use moving averages to showcase trends so that you don't sort of see you see down here this is showing the busyness of the data whilst up here you're sort of seeing the outline of a trend and what I've done here is I've overlaid moving averages um, versus sort of looking at one quarter versus another quarter or versus the last quarter same period last quarter Okay, so I'm just going to round off there. Um, obviously, you can definitely check out our showcase page here. So there's plenty of um, plenty of other inspiration for you. Um, there's even some we've, we've added a lot recently, so you, you can actually have a play around and have a look at them. And you'll see the many many different ways that grids are used. I've utilized grids within these reports, right? No, it's not always the same technique. There's there's many different ways. Like this is a perfect example of of, of a different technique. Um, in creating grids, which I'll, um, I can hopefully showcase to you. You can actually download this particular resource. We do make this one available for free on our showcase page, so, so uh, on our resources page. So definitely check that out. Um, you can navigate to to that um, within the Enterprise DNA website. So you see here, I've utilized a, a, a few different ways to create grids. Right, I've created this over overall grid at the top here, where I've differentiated between this top sort of layer where I've got the header and, and slices etc then I've utilized these these simple lines here like this and then I've also created grids within this particular larger rectangle so we've created a grid that way and we've also created a grid that way so just some ideas for you just for some ideas from a visualization perspective so hopefully you know you can sort of get some inspiration from this and maybe start utilizing you know ideas like this i just do know that this this does create um, a good difference um, a big difference to your consumer experience okay hopefully you enjoyed learning about this one um, definitely subscribe to enterprise dna tv got plenty of great content coming out to you um, around uh, a range of different analytical um, techniques and ideas etc so so definitely want to get those out to you and um, if you could throw the video a like and if you enjoyed the content really really appreciate it okay all the best talk to you soon